In this video, I'm going to review the parts of the nervous system. We'll go more into detail on some of these when we get into the nervous system more deeply. Alright, if we look at the nervous system, we pretty much will break it into two parts. The two parts are going to be the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. So you should know from your background somewhat what the two parts of the central nervous system are. One of them just showed up. One is the brain and the second one is the spinal cord. So the brain and spinal cord are going to get information, integrate the information, and then send information back. The spinal cord is also going to be responsible for sending information to and from the brain. Now if you just had a brain and a spinal cord, your nervous system couldn't do much because you have no way of getting information into the brain or spinal cord and no way to send a response out. So that's where we have the peripheral nervous system. And just so you're aware, central nervous system, many times you'll see it abbreviated CNS, and the peripheral nervous system, you'll see it abbreviated PNS. So the peripheral nervous system contains two basic types of neurons. One's going to take information into the brain and spinal cord. One's going to take the information out. So we have what's called a sensory neuron. Think about your senses and what they do. Sensory neurons, what they will do is they will take information from the peripheral nervous system into the central nervous system. So your senses take information from the outside and bring it in. So from a directional standpoint, again, sensory neurons take information from the peripheral nervous system to the central nervous system. So the gap gets the information. That gets the information into the central. But what's going to make a response back? The response back is going to be through a motor neuron. A motor neuron takes information from the CNS to the peripheral nervous system. So I guarantee you, you will see one of these two on the test. And again, you need to know what CNS and PNS stand for. So motor neurons take information from the central nervous system, from the brain and spinal cord, out to the body. Now there are two types of motor neurons. The first type is called an autonomic neur motor neuron. And the second type is called a somatic motor neuron. We've already discussed this one. Somatic motor neurons control voluntary skeletal muscle. So when we went over muscle and I talked about how a muscle, skeletal muscle is stimulated by the nervous system, I told you it was a motor neuron, but specifically it's a somatic motor neuron. So it's voluntary, it's voluntary skeletal muscle. Now there are other parts of your body that are not voluntary that we want to work without really having to think about it. Things like your heart, your lungs, your digestive system, think of the organs basically in your torso. Those are controlled by autonomic motor neurons. Autonomic, think of the word automatic. So you have autonomic motor neurons control involuntary responses. Somatic motor neurons are voluntary and control skeletal muscle. Now there are two parts to the autonomic nervous system. So let's imagine here's your heart. Here's your heart. It is controlled by autonomic motor neurons sending signals to the heart. It has to be able to deal with two situations. One, it has to be able to control the heart in a rest situation, and it has to be able to deal with or control the heart in a fight or flight response. So the two parts of the autonomic nervous system are the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. So what happens is when the heart is at rest, the parasympathetic is sending signals that keeps the heart rate low. Now these autonomic Motor neurons also control other parts of your body. So when you're in a rest and digest kind of situation, your heart rate's low, your blood pressure's low, your breathing rate is low. Now think about it. What about your digestion? Are you digesting foods when your parasympathetic nervous system is controlled? Yes, you are. So what happens when the parasympathetic nervous system fires? It's a resting situation. Low heart rate low breathing, you're digesting food, that's what your body's doing. Now let's say you're sitting around studying and a big scary bear comes around. So here's my big scary bear, there's its four little legs, and it's going to come after you, it's hungry. What's going to happen is your body has to be able to deal with this fight or flight response. So you see the big scary bear and what happens then instead of your parasympathetic nervous system firing, your sympathetic nervous system fires. So what happens to your heart rate? It goes up. What happens to your breathing rate? It goes up. What happens to your blood pressure? It goes up. 
your pupils dilate, your pupils dilate so you can see the situation. And what do you think happens to your digestion when the sympathetic nervous system is in control? When the sympathetic nervous system is in control, your digestive system kind of slows down. Where's your blood flow go when your sympathetic is in control? What needs blood flow in this situation? You're being chased by a bear. You're being chased by this big scary bear. When you're being chased by a big scary bear, your, your blood is going to go to your muscles. When you're not being chased by a big scary bear, then where's your blood flow going to go when the parasympathetic is in control? Then it's going to go to your digestive system. Okay? Then it's going to go to your digestive system. So you have two sets of autonomic motor neurons controlling all these organs. When the sympathetic is firing, it's the fight or flight. When the parasympathetic is firing, it is the rest and digest. So again, go back and review these basic structures. We'll do a little case study with it and a little uh, activity to make sure you understand the differences between these.